Hi, one of the nice features you can configure using authentication services is single sign-on based on Kerberos. As we have configured our environment now with that Linux box and with that Windows system and we have created our user authentication demo, now we can use that user to do some kind of single sign-on. And I'm going to try to demonstrate that with the use of SSH and how to hop around in your environment without ever supplying a password anymore. So it's very easy. So first thing you need, just log in to one of your systems inside your domain with the Unix enabled user via authentication services. I will do this just trying to log into my um, Windows management workstation. My workstation is a member of the domain, so all the domain users should be able to log in. Usually I've configured in that way. So I'm going to use my Windows management station as the initial point, and then we're going to explore our environment a little bit much more deeper. Okay, so first log into the Windows system and I'm going to log in with my auth demo user, giving it my password. And now I'm logged in to my Windows workstation and I'm logged in as the auth user. And when I log into the Windows workstation, I will automatically get a Kerberos ticket because I'm now authenticated to Active Directory. So the next thing I want to use is I have installed PuTTY on my system. And I want to use PuTTY to log in automatically to my, to my Linux server I've configured before. So this Linux squares or PaaS, how it is named. And to do this, we have to instruct PuTTY to use or to support Kerberos based authentication. This is not enabled by default, so you have to configure it. The first thing, go to the little menu on the left and select the connection entry. Expand this a little bit and then go to SSH and click on the off menu. And you're gonna see that there's a sub note below that is called GSS API. And GSS API stands for the Kerberos based authentication. The thing you have to enable is these two upper boxes. And that's all you need to enable here in that screen. And the next one you have to configure is about data. This is listed directly under the connection entry. And to make PuTTY automatically use the user account you're logged in with, please select use system username. Otherwise, it's going to ask you for a user account that you want to use to connect to the Linux system or to the other system. So in this case, we just want to use the one we are, we are already logged in with. That's our demo user. And then we're going to use GSS API based authentication or Kerberos based Windows based authentication, whatever you name it, to log in to the Linux box. Once we have configured, we just click, because maybe we want to go to back to our sessions, that's the system we want to go to with the appropriate port, and just click on open. And bam, magic, you're logged in and no password was requested because you're now authenticated via your Kerberos ticket you got when you logged into the Windows domain. And of course, you may want now to do the same thing just to jump a little bit further. So in this case, you might want just to enable SSH to jump to a different server in my environment. This is called, in my case, PM4PM. You're going to see that later. And again, the same behavior. No password. You're still logged in. You're already logged into the new system. Who am I? Not surprisingly, I'm, of course, still off demo. But it tells me that I'm logged in coming from the Linux dash pass system. I was logged in before directly with the PuTTY program via Windows. So I'm now coming from Windows to, Lin to Linux and jumping further on to a different Unix system. And all without supplying a password. Very easy, very nice. So how is this configured? Of course, you need to tweak all these systems a little bit to make them aware and to use Kerberos, especially for the SSH service. The appropriate settings for PuTTY we have already discussed, so you have to enable them on PuTTY as well. And on the systems, you may have to do the following. And now I'm on the, on the Linux system again. That's the first one I've jumped, jumped into. So the first one you want to go is into the EDZ directory. And you need, may need to, have, to be root to do this, what the appropriate actions that I now show you. I just want to just show you, but not execute it, but I, because I have already done this before. So in this case, just go to the easy directory and have a look on the, on the 
krb5.conf file. And you're going to see that my configuration, the key, key rb5.conf file, which is the centralized standard default Kerberos configuration file on Unix, is not longer a valid file, but it, instead it is a link pointing to the vas.conf file, which is determining the Kerberos configuration from the vas perspective and via when I have installed the product on that system. The reason for, supply, for making this a link is that you may have other systems or other software on the system and this system has no clue that VAS even exists. It just looks by default into this krb5.conf file. You, there may be configuration things you can tweak to point it to something different, but by default it will look exactly on that location to that file. And uh, in this case it may just reference old outdated information if you don't have that link. So in this case if you have a link together tries to access the krb5.conf file and instead it will read the entries from the vas.conf file so that is working fine together with authentication services. So what I did in this case if I was just I was just renaming the original file before I started configuration of Kerberos or of authentication services to something like .old and then I created the link and then I continued all the other ones. Okay, that's the first one you have to do. The second one is just make the uh, SSH daemon and the SSH client use of Kerberos or via the so-called PAM methodology that is available in Unix. PAM in this case stands not for privilege access management, but it stands for pluggable authentication. And in this case you just have to enable SSH to use PAM. And this is usually achieved if you have something configured in your pam.d directory. And you're going to see lots of individual files. So usually there's one file per service that defines how all this pluggable authentication method uh, is configured and needs to be used. And there are a couple of SSH and SSHD, something like that we are going to use. But they they consist of several settings and to make configuration easier for you, you can use the VAS tool, your Swiss Army knife of authentication services, of course, to do the configuration for you instead that you need to configure all this manually. And to, to do this, you just have to execute our opt quest bin, VAS tool, configure, PAM SSH. Or sshd and once you execute that command it will gonna modify the PAM files accordingly so that the PAM stuff is used inside the appropriate services you have configured PAM for. Um, because we are supplying a couple of PAM modules with the authentication services you need to do this otherwise uh, the services will follow the old traditional way and will not cons cons considerate PAM or uh, will not use the VAS supplied PAM modules in determining what's how's the identity, what's where's your password and the things that the PAM modules are doing that we deliver together with authentication services is simply that way enable you to use Kerberos and of course they enable you to reroute the authentication request to Active Directory instead consulting local files or other sources of information. Okay, once you have done this you may see a couple of things in your configuration files. So maybe let's let's have a look into the SSHD. You're going to see that there's something not really showing different because mainly it is just referencing to something like password.off. And this is another PAM configuration file that is sourced into all the appropriate entries in these services just to make it much more easier to configure. So our our candidate to look into is the password off. So just have a look like here. And you're going to see that there are some entries here now visible that go something like pam underscore was free dot so. And these are the pam modules we deliver together with the product and they are now sit on the required lines of the configuration. So we're going to be used when you use your SSHD and SSH service. 
Once you have done this, you're almost there. You just need to tell SSH and SSHD to use all these stuff as well in their own configuration files because this is PAM and the other one is the local configuration of the appropriate services. So let's have a look into the uh, configuration file of the SSH service or in the SSHD daemon, whatever you want. Um, I have to be root to look into that in my system. So just switch to root. It may not require it on your system. Maybe you have only read permission to that system. I don't have it, whatever it is. So in this case, I want to configure the SSH daemon to be able to work with Kerberos authentication for requests coming in like PuTTY. Uh, I have to tweak this system in the following way. And here it is. That's the SSHD configuration files. And there are a couple of things in that file that start with GSS API. Here we are. And these are the settings you have to configure. Or this is the main settings you have to configure. And you may notice that there is a section called Kerberos on top of it. You don't need to, to, have to, to deal with that Kerberos options here. Use GSS API. This is the one we use. You may remember that in the PuTTY stuff you have to configure all this GSS API as well. So you have to have configuration for the appropriate settings here in the SSHD config file too. And leave the old Kerberos stuff alone. This is nothing of importance here if you use authentication services or Kerberos on that system. So in this case you have to enable the GSS API authentication. You have to enable GSS API cleanup credentials. You have, may have to have enable GSS API key exchange. And there are a couple of other stuff you need to configure like challenge response authentication or password authentication. And one of the important ones is use PAM. It is. That should be by default set, but please check it. Otherwise it will not work. So once you have done this, you simply have to restart your SSHD service to consume the uh, changes to the configuration. And then you can log in via an SSH connection from an outside using Kerberos credentials. And if you want to connect to different systems, you may have to tweak your SSH client in, in a pretty much the same way. Uh, there are a couple of GSS API options uh, that need to apply to that SSH configuration file too. And if you want into detail, know what type of options you have to set, I would recommend to read the manual or have a look into the One Identity support site in the knowledge base to see what really needs to be configured because the GSS API settings, they may vary depending on your Unix system you're connecting to or they may be marrying um, depending on the versions of the various SSH clients and daemons you're using. So please have a look on the, in the manual or just very easy, go to the manual. Okay, go to support, go to the support side of one identity, select the authentication services, it's, un it's under privilege management. And this will give you the standard starting page of that product for the support. And of course you have access to the technical documentation to download the administrative guide to, to see what you need to do or need to configure. On the other hand, we have a couple of things that is called the knowledge base articles. And if you look into the knowledge base article searching for SSO config, it comes up with a couple of findings. And the first one is on AI, AIX, the second one is on Linux, and the third one is HPUX. So you see there are a couple of individual knowledge base articles for each of these different Unix versions. Our one is a Linux one, so we're going to click on the Linux one. And you're going to find the appropriate configuration settings to the SSHD config. These are the ones we have just discussed. Or maybe for the SSH uh, client side, you're going to have only to set these, these two ones. And once you have done, everything should work as expected. So, very straightforward, very easy.